What did she do wrong? It's probably her fault. It's, it's their fault. It's that my company's fault. It's my president's fault. It's the balloon that flew over. <laughs> like, okay, see, I woke you up finally. It's somebody's fault that I have anxiety. And God goes, listen, it's not about fault. It's about responsibility. When I said you're going to be blessed and your circumstance looked the opposite, will you keep faith alive? Or will you do what the children of Israel did and just the circle of grumbling? And by the way, never, nobody wants to ever grumble alone. Get some other people to grumble so you feel justified in your grumbling. And I'm going to tell you, there's only two people who didn't grumble with them. And they're the only ones who saw the promised land. Are you with me? There's a point I made last two weeks ago, but it's such a great point, And it's so powerful for where we're heading. Jesus said in Mark 11, if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, and you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe what you say is going to happen, it will be granted to you. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, I believe, therefore I spoke. I want to give you another law of the spirit, the law of faith. Jesus said, if you say to the mountain, there are, when we're going through a trial, one of the things, one of the weapons of warfare that we have is to take the will of God, in this case, prophecies, testimonies, whatever God said to you, and you take that and you speak it. Now, I'm not saying you necessarily tell another human. I'm talking about that voice activates faith. So you get in your prayer closet, and for those new believers, I'm not talking about a physical closet, which when someone told me that when I was a brand new believer, I used to go to the closet for a year before someone explained it didn't have to be a closet. That's a true story. I, was, I didn't know. Someone told me, you have to have a prayer closet. So I cleared everything out and went into a closet. That's what I thought they meant. But I'm talking about in the privacy of my own prayer time, I actually don't whisper. I actually speak to my mountains and I say, daughter, the Lord called you when you were four years old. We dedicated you to the Lord. You will not be a drug addict. You will be an evangelist. You will not be addicted to drugs. You will, be, you will be free. And I begin to speak to this mountain. I'm not speaking so some human will do something. I'm speaking so the angels will know the assignment of the Lord and go out and carry out his word. Are you with me? Paul went on in the same book Speaking to Timothy, how many of you know Timothy must have been in a faith crisis? Because almost the entire book of 1 Timothy has words of exhortation and instruction specifically about faith. And he writes this to Tim in uh, 1 Timothy 4, 6. In pointing these things out to the brethren about faith, you will be a good steward of Christ Jesus, constantly nourished on the words of faith, and of sound doctrines, which you've been following. And you know, everybody knows this, but your body needs nutrition, right? I was just reading the FDA sets individual daily nutrition requirements for vitamins and minerals. And I have a whole bunch of them down. I won't go through them this time. It's embarrassing because I don't know what they mean. And I'm hoping I got enough from that cupcake I ate on the way in here. <laughs> I felt compelled, so I ate it. It said gluten-free, and I'm like, so it must be good for you. <laughs> but the, 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 the point is, is that we need to create a culture of faith because like our bodies need vitamins and minerals, our spirit also feasts on words and nourishes on words of faith. So, good. so you probably do this like I do. Sometimes you spend three hours watching a media, 10 minutes reading the Bible, 
and wonder why you're freaking anxiety ridden all the time. Do you ever do that? You don't have to raise your hand. I will be the only one to confess my sins in here. I can do it alone. My point is, is that it matters what we feed on. If we, if we are feeding, what are, you feed, what are you feeding your spirit on? Are you snacking on words of doubt? Grumbling like the Israelites did in the wilderness? Or are we feasting on the word of God, partaking of the prophecies previously spoken over us, dining on words of destiny, tasting the testimonies of his divine disruptions in our life? What are we eating? And, and I mean this sincerely. It's like we have to create. We're in a war of faith. We got into the kingdom by faith. We're supposed to promote the kingdom by faith. I'm supposed to live by faith. I can only please God by faith. And it means I have to feast on words of faith, not words of doubt, not words of grumbling. I'm not saying you can stick your head in the sand and not, you know, not watch you know, news or something. I'm just saying when the news dictates your attitude and your spirit, you should turn the freaking thing off and feast on this for a while. Look at your your prophecies and your testimonies and say, I got to stay here. I got to watch the news by faith. When I see, when I see crisis in our life, the Russian Ukrainian crisis with our brothers who God loves so much. God loves the Chinese. God loves the Russians. He loves the Ukrainians. He even loves the Americans. When I look at, when I read the news or watch the news, I have to be full of faith for the nations. I can't be another one of the grumblers politically under the political spirit who have another person to blame. I'm like, God, you put this in front of me and I say to that situation, and I won't mention any because it'll polarize people. I say to that situation right now in Jesus' name, you will come to nothing. Yes. 